Remember when the stock market was all rainbows and unicorns, when everyone was making so much money and all was right with the world? Stocks are now down more than 20% and investors are, well... In this video, I'll give you three tips to stay insane in the stock market crash and even turn it to your advantage. I'll reveal the psychology of a stock crash, helping you spot the investor behaviors that lose money. I'll then show you three ways to invest to make more money as stocks fall. We're getting started, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, I want to start with a graphic I put together for the blog and I'll link to this in the description below, but, but this shows the emotions we all go through in each stock market cycle. Because folks, the biggest delusion in investing is that investors are somehow rational, that, that everyone is making decisions based on those cold, hard facts and analysis. But investors are human and more often than not, investing on those human emotions. So understand the cycle of emotions that investors go through, especially during a stock crash, is going to help you avoid making those bad decisions around them and even help see where we are in the cycle. So I want to zoom in on this part of the chart and you can see during a crash, investors go through something that is surprisingly similar to the seven stages of grief. Investors first just overlook the basic economic facts and deny that anything is wrong, arguing the Fed won't send us into a recession or, or just that stocks will be okay. Eventually, investors are down so much, they turn to bargaining, just hoping for a bounce to get back some of their money. Pretty soon, anger and panic set in and this is when you see those stock losses really build as investors sell out of everything and the market finally reaches a bottom in that capitulation moment when investors have just given up. Now we're not quite to that panic stage in the markets just yet, so stocks likely have further to fall, but, but again, just understanding these emotions are normal, are human in fact, that all investors struggle with them is gonna help you avoid them making those decisions for you. And now I realize that is easier said than done when the market crashes, taking your money along with it. So I also wanna give you three tips to stay insane in the stock market crash and, and actually turn it to your advantage to make more money. First, understand the whole market is falling, including the good stocks. I see too many investors stress out watching their stocks fall and then start second guessing their long-term investments on that short-term pain. Nearly a third of the market, 136 companies in the S&P 500 index are now trading at 52 week lows and the percentage of stocks trading above their 50 day average is the lowest since the pandemic crash. Nation, when the market crashes, investors rush to the exits on everything, even the best stocks, and prices fall across the board. An example of this, shares of Apple, ticker AAPL, are down 28% this year. The leader in consumer electronics, growing sales at an extremely consistent 10% annual pace over the more than a decade, including the most recent quarter. A company with more than $51 billion in cash and investments sitting on the balance sheet and generating over $105 billion in free cash flow each and every year has lost a third of its value in just six months. And we'll talk about valuations next, but Apple, the company, has not changed in those six months. The only thing that has changed is the stock market, and when this happens, you need to have the confidence to stick with your long-term stocks. We've still got two more ways to stay sane to highlight, but if you wanna see which stocks I'm buying, the seven biggest stocks in my portfolio, click through the link I'll leave in the description. This is a free report I put together with The Motley Fool. It's absolutely free, no obligation. Now, The Motley Fool is gonna email you an offer for their Stock Advisor newsletter. I use it, I like the analysis, but, but there is no obligation to buy anything. So look for that link below, get your free report, and you'll be helping support the channel, so I appreciate that. Next here, I wanna show you how to find some certainty in an uncertain market. And Nation, the worst part of a bear market is just not knowing. Watching stocks crash lower, your portfolio shrinking, and not knowing when the pain stops. Adding even a little bit of certainty can help take that stress out of investing. Let's start with a chart of the price to earnings ratio for the stock market, the S&P 500 over the last 60 years. Now you'll see some charts go back as much as 100 years and more, but, but really since the 60s is the modern age of stocks and really a better guide to valuations. Now remember that PE ratio is just the price of a stock or, or the stock market here divided by earnings, that most basic valuation for an investment. Since you're buying an ownership in that company, you want to know what price you're paying for the earnings generated. You see a few spikes here where earnings have crashed in the pandemic and in 2008, but, but generally the market has peaked around 25 to 30 times on that price to earnings basis in those bull markets over the last 20 years. 
We've also seen it fall into about 15 times for those bear market lows. Now, as I record this, with the S&P 500 at 3,700 and stocks in the index reporting earnings of $197 over the last year, we are just at over, over 19 times on that PE ratio, which isn't too far above the median of 18 times. So with a 20% drop in stocks, we're not too far from that long-term fair value. But it is important to understand if we get a recession, that's going to change that E part of the price to earnings ratio. This chart shows the year over year change in corporate earnings since 1948. And you can see those dips in the recessions. On average, earnings tend to fall between 10 to 20% in a recession. So we need to build that into our valuation for what could be a bottom in the stock crash. Here we see analyst expectations for earnings in 2023 on those S&P 500 companies right now expected at $251 per share for the index. But if we take that 10 or 20% cut in a recession, we get earnings that could be between $200 to $225 per share for the market. Now stick with me here because I know this is a lot of numbers to throw at you, but taken together, we can use this to get an idea for how low stocks could go and when to buy. So we'll use that midpoint for the earnings. So estimating about $210 per share for the S&P 500 companies in 2023. If we use that times that long-term price to earnings median of 18 times, we get a target of 37.80 on the index. Now that's actually about 3% above where the market is right now. If we want to go more conservative though, looking for that low estimate and then multiply that 210 in earnings by the PE low of 15 times, we get a target of 31.50 for the S&P 500. Now that would be about 35% down from the peak of 4,800 reached last year and another 15% lower from here. And what this means, how you use this is it can give you a level of confidence or certainty on where stocks might go. You can play around with the numbers a little bit, but, but I think you can be confident that buying stocks around that 3,150 target or, or even maybe a little higher that you're going to get a great deal and will make solid returns over the next bull market. Now we'll get to that next tip and this one is going to make all the difference, but I want to get your input on this as well. What do you do to stay sane during a stock crash? How do you avoid making those bad investing decisions? So, so scroll down and let us know in the comments below. Now this third tip is the most important of all, changing your perspective on the stock market crash, because this is really the best time to invest. Nation, I've been investing for 23 years now. In fact, I started in 1999, which was a great time to start because we know what happened to stocks that next year. One thing I've learned over four major stock market crashes and countless corrections is this. You make your money during a crash. Putnam Investments researched 17 major events that sent stocks crashing over the last 80 years, from world wars to the pandemic. The average return just one year after each event was 31% higher, with the market rising in all but one of these. And in data back 60 years, investors buying after a 20% drop in stocks have averaged a 70% return in the following five years. Now for all you growth investors out there that have seen your stocks crushed over the last year, shares of Amazon fell 95% from their peak in 1999 to a low of just $6 each in 2002. At the peak of last year, those same shares would be worth more than 500 times that, a 50,000% return for understanding the power of investing in a crash. Now another way of looking at this, as stocks were reaching those all-time highs last year, Wall Street's biggest banks were warning that returns would be horrible for a decade or more. This shows the Morningstar survey on long-term return expectations, what each of these five researchers see as an average annual return over the next decade. BlackRock was the most optimistic here, thinking the stock market might eke out a 6.7% annual return over the next decade, but, but everyone else was unanimously bearish. Analysts at Morningstar and research affiliates thought we would be lucky to get a 1.6% annual return for the next 10 years. Stocks were so expensive, reaching more than 30 times on that P.E. ratio that the outlook was a decade of go nowhere stocks in a best case scenario. That 4.1% annual return forecast by JP Morgan would have meant a target of 7173 on the S&P 500 by 2031. But now after that 20% crash in stocks, that same target is now a 7% annual return for investors going forward. Because of the crash, you can now look forward to building off these low valuations to those stronger returns on your money. And keep investing nation because this is where you make money. Click on the video to the right for the 12 dividend stocks that will put cash in your pocket every week. A 12 stock portfolio for cash flow every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.